date. Is this a date or are we just hanging out? Like? I felt like a girl who was crushed. Like you just <laughs> is, is this, this a date, date or are we just <laughs> hanging out? Like I thought it was a date. <laughs> oh no, if it's a date, you go calamari, I think. But go there's ahead. some people who are just unsettled, they don't do the calamari. And those aren't people you want to be in a relationship with because they're children, you know? <laughs> Whoa. That's a good way of thinking about yeah. it. It's like weeding out. If you can't handle calamari, you're not gonna be able to handle that's my a Maryland, domestic abuse. That, that's a Marilyn Monroe quote, I believe, right? <laughs> if you can't handle me at my calamari. You'll be able to handle me at my domestic abuse? Yeah. Yeah, I think that was her. Oh, I thought you were doing something. Oh, I'm just, I'm pulling up our, our sheet of information oh, that shit, we have on fuck. you. And I'm not even gonna look this at is, it. <laughs> this is a real legit operation. Some people just like invite you and they go, yo, what do you do? <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a lot, a lot coming from me. <laughs> yeah. At least one person knows, you know? <laughs> no, he doesn't. She definitely does. <laughs> She knows your whole life story. Oh, really? Yeah, Fuck yeah, back yeah. and forward. Hey, hey. She, she asked earlier, she's like, should I add his like social or is that too far? <laughs> it was too far, we decided. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 146. What is it, Alyssa? 146. Hell yeah, brother. We've got the big Fahim Anwar. Damn, I've never been referred to as the big. The big. I like it. What do you usually refer to as? The medium. Uh, <laughs> that's that's so way better than the small. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Jared's, Silver lining. Yeah, that's where Jared's at. That's small? his camp. Not better than the schmedium, though. The small Sh medium. medium. Yeah, you know, there, were, there was an era of rap where everyone was big, remember? Mm -hmm. And then oh, it was yeah. Lil. Now, yeah. And now it's all dollar signs. Now it's What's all, the new thing? Uh, that's a good question. What is the new thing? Uh, there was babies, babies for a while. There's, yeah, a lot of babies. Is it being anti-Semitic? I know Kanye was... That's kind of one. That's one right now. That's he's, one. Okay, okay. He's leading the charge. It's a tough one. Not a lot of people. It's kind of niche. Did you hear he's back on the liking Jews train though? Oh, it's because he saw Jonah Hill. In 21 Jump Street. It's funny that that's the movie that yeah. like I like him now. Wait, like just recently he saw Twenty One Jump Street and was like, "Oh yeah." He tweeted, "They're I, cool." He tweeted, "I like Jewish people again," basically because of he saw that movie. He saw that movie. My question is, do you think he saw it for the first time, or was he reminded of how great Jewish people are because he saw it once and he's like, "I forgot how good this movie is." What do you What do you think, Jared? Knowing Kanye, I feel like this is the first time he's ever seen it. You know, it's like a what? It's almost ten years old at this point. That's if a good not, point. I'm just yeah. glad we can finally put uh, to rest the debate. Hey, if you'd go back in time, would you kill baby Hitler? It's like no, I just bring Twenty One Jump Street with me. Right. Oh, show man. him. Uh huh. And then we're good. Hitler would lose his mind at 21 Jump <laughs> You think he would Jump like Street. it? I think he would love it. Are you kidding? That'd be a good podcast theme. Just sort of every episode. Would Hitler like this movie? There we go. And then you get new ones. You're like, I don't think he would like. Like what's a, that. like I did, like, I don't know. Crude two. I feel like he'd crude two. He'd, he'd have nothing to do with I it. I thought you were mispronouncing Creed for a second. I thought so too. I was like, crude you guys know two? No, you guys know nothing about the crudes. Uh, hit me with some intro music. We're just guys hanging out. Man. Okay. Um, if you guys don't know, this man uh, is careerly funny, I guess you could C say. Careerly? Career yeah. I guess so. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's definitely an adjective. What was the trauma that sparked it all? You know, that's the stereotype of stand-up comedians. Is that you like, better have one, or I'm going to be like so I was ticked. beat up, like like Joe Jackson or something. Like my dad just yeah. beat, beat me and turned me into the greatest stand-up comedian ever. Yeah. But I had a pretty idyllic childhood. Yeah. Not a lot of trauma. No, not uh, even. You have like immigrant parents. I've heard a lot of stories, like horror stories yeah, from yeah, friends yeah. growing up. I mean, that is pretty par for the course. Maybe yeah. I'm just burying the trauma and I don't where, believe where that I have it. Afghanistan. Heard of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry so, about all the stuff. <laughs> so sorry for the <laughs> last sorry, 20 sorry years. About all the, I don't know. This <laughs> is why we brought you here. Like we <laughs> to feel learn, to learn so about, bad. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah, apologize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And on behalf of Afghanistan, I would like to accept your apology. I, yeah, yeah, because I could tell it's from the heart and stuff. Yeah, yeah. that means a lot. I'm, I'm glad we can come to terms on that. Yeah, um, do it on the podcast. My, my dad was, he flew F-15s. Oh, um, really? Yeah, and yeah. he was a backseater that dropped bombs. So I want to double apologize for my lineage. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was only on the bad guys. It wasn't, there was no mistakes. Definitely no mistake. No, and my dad, not one mistake. Not one mistake. <laughs> um, no, the only mistake he made is right there. I just, check in. Oh. Yeah. I just check in with your cousins if you can. Oh, anyway, I'm glad they're, they're all over here. They're, we're good. We're good. Oh, you brought them all. Brought them all. So, no, God, no trauma. That Are your parents together still? Yeah, they're together. It's disgusting. Damn. All right. Sorry, dude. Not even. So. I've been trying to break them up, you know, since I was a kid, too. You okay. Should. I yeah. would just like, you know, like that bald guy in Game of Thrones. I would whisper things. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Dad says this. And then they'd have a mature conversation about it. And they would hash it out. Yeah. Like, fuck. Their, their relationship would actually grow stronger. Stronger. Like, what the fuck? So are you bilingual? There's no Disney movie about that. Instead of like the parent trap where they set them up, there should yeah. be one where they try to split them up. 
Exactly. It'd be like a fucked up version of the parent trap. Yeah. Did we just sell the movie in the room? I've actually, I think I've completely written that movie, which yes, is have you? Completely, I've completely yeah. written it, which is a really funny thing that you brought up. Cause I was like, how much information does he know about us? Whoa. <laughs> and that got me a little mad. I okay. mean, I did have the tropes of like, if you want to call this trauma or whatever, just like the things that you have to do, uh, like getting good grades. And then they didn't like me doing stand up, and it was like doing heroin, mm. you know, yeah. even though I was getting good grades, I was still going to college. Well, what was your subject of choice? Uh, I studied engineering, so I got a mechanical Oof. engineering the degree. Math is there for that, huh? The math, I, like I didn't love it, yeah. but I I could do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just it's had in a your high. Blood. F- it's in my blood. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> kind of, I guess. What do What do your parents do for a living, or what did they do when my they first? My dad. My dad's an engineer at Boeing, and that's what I ended up doing. Oh gosh. Yeah, my mom was a nurse for a while, Going and then in she just from hair. inside out, huh? Inside um, out, man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that just dawned on me. What you were? I'm sure your dad's a good guy. He's a great guy. Where does he live now? Woodenville, like the. That sounds fake. It's, He's no in the woods. See, it's Seattle. I should yeah. say Seattle. No one knows the burbs of Seattle. Oh, no, no. Yeah, not, not many people know Seattle anymore. That's true. It, I feel like it used to be. I'd say O2. That was like a big destination. Like you've been in Seattle. Now it's like forgot it existed ever since the Supersonics. It's left. still around. I know. Yeah, we have you no big, team. You big sports guy. Eh, like my, oh, here we my, go. My brother is. So okay, I will. Kind should have had your brother on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Whoa! All right. Like, uh, let's get him on, dude. He loves sports. Yeah, how's, how is your brother doing? I've been meaning to ask. He's good. You know Tamim? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I love to put it on my tacos. Yeah. Tamim? <laughs> oh, Tahin. Oh, yeah, Tahin, Tahin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you started off in comedy. Jared, where? He started in Seattle. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Makes sense. Adds up. We, yeah. Dude, we, we've got so many notes on you. You might think we're not prepared. Bro. Hit him with a fact about Hit himself. Hit him with a fact about that I don't even know. Dude. He goes, you have cancer. I go, what? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> yeah, we shit. talk to your primary care physician. <laughs> but yeah, we, stage- viol- we violate HIPAA on this pod. We don't give a fuck. It's stage one, so it's kind of annoying if you even tell your friends because they're going to be like, oh my gosh. And then you'll be like, it's very curable. Right. Yeah. You wait till stage four. I just watched Before Funny you get People the last night, the movie, and made me think of people dying. Anyway, um, give him a fact about himself. Uh, he has a uh, comedy group or a group of comedians called Goat Face, which includes Hassan Minaj, uh, Aristotle, of uh, how do you say it? Athari. Uh, Athari. And <laughs> Sorry, a- Asif Ali. Yeah. There Sorry we we're so ethnic, you know. it's That's on us. <laughs> I would ask. That, that was a network note we got. We go, can you be Jim Johnson and can you be Brad Lewis? Oh, yeah. But we were yeah. like, we should keep our names. I don't know. Mm. That's a bold, but move. it's a mouthful. Um, I also don't know if she, if Alyssa, may have may have mistyped it because the way that you pronounce it is not how it was spelled. Oh, it was a theorist in the yeah. So it was a theorist for a long time, and then he got SNL, and okay. then I think Do you guys hate him a little bit. No, I it's mean like the Harry Styles of this whole thing. Of, there is that thing where like SNL's every comic's dream, you know? Yeah, and then because you guys are like One Direction, if you got stopped a little too much at the airport. This is true. <laughs> Very similar. Yeah. And we did R&B for a little bit. So yeah. we do have some of that crossover. You guys comedy. did R&B? We did R- no, we didn't. <laughs> that <laughs> would you be believe me for a second? phenomenal. Because that's magical. Okay. So this guy gets SNL and then it's you guys SNL. all hate him. No, no, no. We love him. Uh, uh, I'd say the same thing, but we know. No, no, no. It's one of those things where you're like a little jealous for a second, but then you're like, that's my brother getting it. That's yeah. awesome. Like yeah. you root for How him. cool. Yeah. So I think he changed his name. Like it was Athari, but then when he was doing Hollywood stuff, he changed it to a theorist. And then when he got SNL, he thought like that was like a big enough thing. I want to go back to my real name. Okay. So he did a Thari. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. 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 What's your real name? I whiten mine down. I'm originally Zachary, but I go by Zach now. Oh, that makes Just sense. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want to get be too ethnic. Zach is fucking, that's like, yeah. you're a pop star. Hell yeah. Zachary, you, you want no. the edges of your PBJ cut off. And I he still does. I mean, if oh. you don't like, <laughs> but that is also a Zach move too. Like your prince or Zach something. Move. You're like, Zach doesn't like crust. What, what's uh? Do you, do you have any small vices like that? Oh. And I mean minuscule vices where it's like, come on, dude. I don't like mushrooms and shit. So I agree. Like, oh, but, you don't like mushrooms either? No, no, no. I think I think they're the devil. Okay, scent. but okay, I may be coming around here. I think oh, I gosh. didn't like poor people mushrooms because that's all I had access mm-hmm. to when I was okay. growing up was like poor people mushrooms. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, which is like mushroom on pizza. Oh, they're kind of gross. They're just yeah. rubbery. It's a terrible texture. Yeah. But then you make a little more money. Oh, you're about to hit me with portobello, aren't you? Something. There might yeah. be a pasta, and there's there, when they say they're in season. Ooh, that's going to be an elevated mushroom. Anything in season. Domino's isn't saying in season. Mm-hmm. They got. Those I've been all to Domino's. They haven't said it once. Yeah, you're just lucky to get what they advertise. But if you're at a fancy Italian place and it's like some sort of mushroom, you can't even pronounce. I'm like, yeah, I'll try that. If you're having, do you get depressed often? No. Well, if if you ever. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm sure you've gone through a breakup, something hard where you have to order a pizza that's it's not top of the line. You just want to get it there quick. You, you want to cry away your calories. Oh, what, what's yeah. a place you go to? Just like a dirty pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like get fucked by a pizza type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. We'll you know, I did do it recently. Just I wanted to know what I was getting. I did a Pizza Hut pizza. Yeah? Even What'd though there's way better options. <laughs> they sponsoring a lot Are of our they the ones recently. always like reinventing pizza? Like they can't just leave well enough alone. They'll inject cheese into the crust. Is it that one? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. They're the ones who are always. I mean, cheese in the crust, that was a big thing for all of us. <laughs> that changed the game. Well, I mean, when I was 12, I thought to myself, no way. I did come from a family where that that was too expensive of an option. Mm. Yeah. But same. I mean, you go to a friend's house and it's like their birthday. Oh, my, and you knew they were rich. You got that. Oof, I, I want to think about it. What about the Pazone that had a moment? Remember the Pazone? I know it was like calzones. A, it was like a pizza calzone type thing. Is that not just what a calzone is on its own? That's what I thought too. Yeah, I think they're just trying to be fancy with it. They're like the pizza Taco Bell. Just they have mm. to, they're like Elon Musk. Just he, they have a press conference every couple months. Like <laughs> here's what we've, but wait, there's more. Do you, um, so you said you, you know, your mental health is, is strong, which is a little <laughs> disgusting. But the, the good thing is, so do you have a woman in your life? A, a man possibly? We are. You're very open. Getting, well, we're getting closer Listen. to June. <laughs> oh, what, is, what does that mean? Oh, That's, wow. He's not an ally. Oh, not oh, an I'm, ally. I, I mean, <laughs> I was <laughs> testing you. I, I know. <laughs> she knows. I know. You yeah, know. Yeah, it's pri- it's, it it's is pri- a, it's pride month. Pride, pride yeah. month. Yeah. So you got to be gay in June. To show you're an ally. Yeah. Exactly. Um, do you have any significant other in your life? I did. Yes. But I, yeah, we what broke, happened? We broke oh, yeah. When was I that? Wanted, uh, maybe like four months ago. Oh, oh hell. It's fresh. Oh, it's wow. fresh. That yeah. is fresh. Way to bring might, it up. Yeah, I might get a Domino's after this. Oh, gosh. <laughs> How long was Can it? Can we just order it during the pod? Just let me go into the spiral. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, as I'm eating Domino's and just pouring my heart out. You know, those those places, they, they do lock down pizza pretty good. Like, it's it's not terrible. You're, you're looking for crap, you get crap, but they've never been good at wings. I don't know what they're doing over there. Oh, Domino's? or Any of them. Any of the any fast pizza food, place? Any pizza place. Oh. Their wings are not up to par. Dude, I can tell you from working at a pizza oh, place here we go. in high school. This guy's in, he's an good. insider. Just don't, they're, they're like this big and they don't have any meat and they overcharge the shit out of them. Like, it's just so not worth Yo, it. Yeah. Do you think the pizza is a loss leader and they know they're going to make it on the back end with the wings? Oh, we're going to gouge them with the wings. That's an interesting theory. That's bro. That's, I don't have a nine 11 jet, jet fuel. Can't melt steel. Beat. That's not my theory. It's this, this is, yeah, yeah. This is it's, my it's conspiracy. That the, they're gouging us for the wings because mm-hmm. of pizza. Dude, you know what blew my mind when I worked at uh, the pizza place? Cheese is really fucking expensive. Like that was the whole thing is that they're like, if somebody, you can't over cheese a pizza because it's costing the company millions. Bro, you know, I used to work at uh, Godfather's Pizza. Did you have that at all? Wait, uh, I haven't. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's a regional thing. Sometimes I ask people and they go, they don't know what it is. Well, we had, oh, wait, no, 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 not Godfather's. We had a Goodfellas pizza <laughs> where I grew up. And like the just, RC Cola of Godfather's <laughs> pizza? Goes, no, 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 no. We, no, we had a Subway. <laughs> we, basically we, what he we was did, like. We sa- our pizzas look like sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just, we, just your, had, we just had bagged pepperoni. <laughs> like wait, but that was your first pepperoni. job pizza place? It wasn't my first job. It was like uh, maybe my second. I was a bag boy. That was my first ever job. But one summer I worked at two pizza places, Round Table Pizza and then Godfather's at the same time. Wow. How how Godfather's? A, a double agent. Yeah, double, double there. agent. And they didn't know. Actually, Godfather's knew. They were pretty chill. Uh-huh. But Roundtable couldn't know that I was working. Really? They were, they were a little. They're not chill. They weren't chill. Who had better pizza? Uh, I liked Godfather's. I felt like Roundtable was like a little overpriced. But Are you still working the G- there? <laughs> yeah, I still, uh, yeah. My heart. <laughs> All right, I just want to. I moonlight pro bono work. <laughs> <laughs> my heart's not into comedy it's into pizza making yeah not even like good pizza just chain chain pizza making yeah. but we had to weigh the cheese and it had to be 11 ounces and they got really mad if you over cheesed it oh yeah because that fucks with our bottom line did you have like the big gray like uh what's a scales or whatever you know and you had the i don't know it was very industrialized yeah you guys were moving coke but it's okay. <laughs> we had to be naked for some reason just so that we wouldn't hide the cheese. 100%. No, I was, feel yeah. that. Do you want to talk about your childhood trauma with him? He, he's my, a good oh, empath. One. My childhood trauma? Yeah. Well, where should I start? <laughs> See, I was bullied in school. You know, that's really? where that's where my trauma stems from. Um, you keep in touch with some of them? No, actually, none of them. <laughs> I did. I ran into one uh, after high school. It was like 
my second year in college. And then he, I ran into him at the gym. He apologized. Whoa, actually, that's like a fantasy. I know. A lot of people don't get that kind of closure. That was crazy. And then somebody that I thought was my friend, um, I, the day I moved here, I was like, guys, I finally made it to LA. And he said, shut the fuck up. No one cares. And I haven't talked to and him. No one cares. <laughs> that was, that was, you know, my sort of closure on those. I mean, I always have this thought when it comes to bullies and stuff, like, you, you know, those episodes of Maury, or, I mean, is, is he still on the air? But those type of shows where they go, this person used to get bullied and then they, they're beautiful now. And then, all right, let's bring your bully to come see you. They're sitting in the crowd. They go, this is, this is, this is Denise now. And she rips through a poster of herself. And she used to be fat or something. <laughs> uh-huh. And now she's gorgeous. She's like a dime. And she's dancing around and everyone's clapping. And she's like, yeah, I used to make fun of me. Now look at me, I'm a babe. Part of me wants to, like if I was the bully, Part of you is like, you wouldn't have kind of got to this place without exactly not condoning what he did or whatever, yep. but like, would she, would her, her life is better. You got, you got to, <laughs> her life is no, a little no, no. better because like he, he was no, 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 the straight impetus. down the lens. You like abuse <laughs> straight Listen, down the lens. I'm just playing as devil's advocate. No, here. I know. Oh, hell yeah. We're, we're into it, man. You yeah. got, you got to like, add a little sh- pressure to make a diamond a little bit. Like, like if my dad would have taught me how to play base, like throw a baseball would, I could have gone into the major leagues instead of having this podcast so like there's i'm so glad he wasn't around too much to you know exactly like this podcast is great (laughs) yeah this is the same thing like this is really you have to have a lot of talent to podcast to talk you have to have a voice (laughs) uh you can you have to have formulate sentences sentences, not even sometimes coherent at times um you need equipment you need he did all that. Did he yeah. buy a, a guitar center? Guitar center? Amazon. Oh, Amazon. Oh, they'll bring it to you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Look at that. You don't even need to know how to drive to have a podcast. You have an address for them to mail it to you, though. Not even. You can just ship it to the like a, an Amazon box or whatever. Oh, okay. So you or can, like a Whole Foods and pick it up? Exactly. Watch this. Jared, hit him with a fact. Hit him with fact. a fact. You should have an air horn, like a fact air <laughs> hey, horn. Hey, 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 make a sound. <laughs> Click any of the buttons. Okay, that's a horn of some sort. Yeah, that's true. I did um, for a horn. Not a good one, but you performed on uh, the Late Show with Seth Meyers and Jimmy Fallon. Oh, oh now yes, we're just jerking yes. them off. Yeah, man. Should I take my pants off? <laughs> Say oh, it again. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, Seth. Myers. Hold on. Tell me which one. Again. You gotta do the first one. Say uh, Seth. Seth. Uh, uh, but how was that? Experience? <laughs> <laughs> but how was that experience? I feel like that's uh, late night. Yeah, or late night or Jimmy Fallon. Either one. It's cool. It's fun. Uh, but you know what's interesting is the landscape of media has changed so much. Yeah. Honestly, like doing this is probably bigger than doing Tonight Show or Late Night with Seth Meyers, just it, in terms yeah. of reach. You well, know what I mean? I really admire how kind of the comedic community has taken over the podcast landscape or really mm-hmm. cemented that because it felt like a long time. The only time you can see your favorite comedian is, you know, you go to a show or you, you'd see a special, but now you get to see their mind work every week, which I always thought, I don't know. I just think it's really cool how comedians have been able to. Well, yeah, it's kind of like uh, as a stand-up, kind of seeing it change. It's also been interesting to know that there's an appetite for that because yeah. when I was coming up, you only knew stand-ups through their performance. You knew them from a late-night performance, mm-hmm. or you knew them from a special. But that's the only glimpses you would ever get of them. Exactly. And then now there's just so many uh, distribution streams with like IG, TikTok, uh, YouTube, and all that. And people are really savvy. Like they know how stand up works. They know that people work on material. It's not some guy who just walked off the street. Yeah. Whereas you ask someone from the eighties or nineties, they think it's just a guy yeah, who got guy up there. It. Yeah. Got yeah. off the bus and just knows all this shit. So the audience has gotten super savvy and they want to know the artist more than just the art. You know, yeah. you can't just, maybe Daniel Day Lewis is the last guy who can just be known through his art. But everybody <laughs> else, everybody else, like no one's telling Daniel Day Lewis, Hey, you got a live tweet. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> hey, movie. start a TikTok. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's the last who doesn't have to do that shit. Whereas this new generation, there's an appetite for like, okay, I want to see the art and I want to, I want to hang out with you week to week. I want to yeah. know how you're, what you're like outside of the art. Whereas you didn't think that people would want that, but they do. And now a lot of times that's actually bigger than on the stage stuff is. Yo, totally. I was having this conversation with a friend who's a stand up as well. And like, I care so much about stand up and shit, but I've had this epiphany where like I can love it, but it's almost, you know, there's this motorcycle and there's a sidecar. I always thought stand up was like the main motorcycle part, but it's yeah. actually the sidecar. Yeah. At this point, 
stand up is the sidecar. People will come to a show because they know you from a podcast, and mm-hmm. then you just have to be like adept and good enough to make everyone happy. But like stand up is in the kind of the sidecar. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah I that's think, interesting. I think that's a a way to monetize and, and drive people kind of to the final product of being able to live. But yeah, just talking, that's that's what people have really fall in love with. Because now people are just going around doing, you know, podcast shows where it's not, oh, I had to write all this material. It's just you and the guy that you do podcasts with every week. We show up to your college and just talk. <laughs> like, could you imagine <laughs> yeah. that? Oh, like you're telling somebody that from the 80s. Oh, you want to go see them in concert? What are you guys doing now? Oh, yeah. Like these guys, I... They're pretty much like me and my friends. We just watch them on a stage just speak to each other, which is pretty <laughs> wild. <laughs> Are you just like talking about what you had for lunch and they're like, ah! yeah, it's, yeah. Is it scripted? What no, was in the sandwich? no, they just, they <gasps> walked out and they specifically said, we have no idea what we're going to say. <laughs> and man, did we love it. <laughs> the theatrics. But, what, but what's crazy is this is the new TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's so new and I mean, you're in your own body. You don't think it's special or whatever, but like it kind of is you're with people week to week. Yeah. And even as a stand up, seeing what, what used to be the blueprint, which is no more. You used to try to get on a sitcom. Yeah. You wanted to be the wacky neighbor or mm-hmm. some shit so that people would come see you do stand up on the weekend. They'll be like, Hey, this is the wacky neighbor from this TGIF show or whatever. Yeah. And that's how you got people to shows. But now you can be as niche as you want. You can just have a podcast and then people will, will find you from that and come because they know you from that. Well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's your entity of, these are, this is my audience that I can take with wherever I want. And then instead of wanting to get on a TV show, it's much bigger to get on a Rogan or like a Theo's podcast totally. or, or things yeah. like that. Cause yeah. then that audience, it doesn't go to NBC. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like, Oh, that's my audience now, no matter how, like there's so many eyeballs that yeah. everyone can have their own mini NBC and they make all, more money than they would on. You know, yeah. That's yeah. the other thing too, is that, you can be smaller and more niche, but you own everything and mm-hmm. you'll make more money doing that yeah. than if you were part of a big Marvel MCU thing. Oh, like ownership's everything. And it, and it allows, I mean, there's no gatekeeper of, of comedy. I mean, the people that watch us understand that, you know, we're being satirical and the things we say or the intention is obviously we're not whatever, but you know, you go on these shows, you're stripped down. It's not even funny anymore. Like people want to see what, they laugh with with their friends rather than uh, that's what I think. Totally, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You get to be like uniquely you rather than lend a shade of whatever it is you do to the bigger project. Yeah. Like if I do an acting thing, it's it's fun or whatever, but it's just like okay, I'll, it's like a version of me. And there's I think so many TV, so much TV film, unless you're the lead in well, uh, what everyone's watching, you know, like a Euphoria or a Game of Thrones. You're not getting any real, <laughs> real return from it. Yeah, I so. see the exact same thing. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, totally. There, are, there may be like two, three shows that people watch collectively as a whole around mm-hmm. the world. Everything else is just, uh, it's so fractured. No one yeah. catches anything. What, um, what made you want to release your special on YouTube? Kind of the landscape and the yeah. way things are going is, uh, I was playing catch up. I think with my career as well. Like, I was a funny guy that people knew in LA, just like comics knew about me and stuff. But publicly, conscious wise, like I, I wasn't a name that people knew and stuff. So I, I didn't want any barriers between the content and the yeah. people. And if I, if I did a thing with like Peacock or like Netflix or, and Netflix has to really push it because just because you have one doesn't mean it's no. going to get to a bunch. Yeah. Sometimes the, I have friends who had specials on there, but there's no billboards or anything. And then it gets buried. Just YouTube, everyone has access to it. And then enough comics had success stories from it. Like, Joe List, Mark Norman, Andrew Schultz kind of broke everything open. No, I, with, that's, what, that's what I was. What, did yours come out before or after he did the like the Schultz? I think before, but then also pod, comedy podcasts became really big and I, I could hop on everyone's podcast yeah. and just there's power in there being a YouTube link after doing a podcast. Definitely. Just having no friction between you and the content. I needed that more than anything. I didn't want to have a paywall. I didn't want to have to do a podcast and then someone have to remember what it's called and then load up whatever the program is because yeah. you lose so many people along the way. Yeah. Whereas if it's all native, I'm doing the rounds with the podcast on YouTube. The link is right there in the description. I just felt like that would play catch up, you know? Yeah, and I, I got to do it my way. Just uh, when you do Hollywood shit, things are so slow. Yeah. I just wanted to move fast. I wanted it to be free. I wanted like one click, one click access. Did you, did you see a big uptick in ticket sales um, on the road once you started 
yeah. posting on socials. And there's layers to it too that I didn't even think about when I first decided YouTube was going to be the home for it. So there's the easy access to it. And then there's promoting it on all my friends, big podcasts yeah. like Rogan, Santino, um, like Whitney's just like all the comedy podcasts. You do that. And that's like a, people see your face a bunch mm -hmm. and it's because I, you know, did this and then you get to disseminate the special into clips. Yeah. So then it has this third wave where people are catching. Most of my views are coming from people catching it on IG reels and TikTok. So that's kind of cool too. I get to yeah. chop up the entire thing in short form. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you do a thing on Netflix, I think they only let you do that with 10 minutes of it. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. And then they own it. They own it in perpetuity, you know? Whereas I own 100% of this thing. Which then gives you the full return of bringing those people into your... How long ago did you kind of flip the switch in your mind? Oh, I've got to go harder on social. Man, I think just noticing the trend. I think I'm a guy who... I write a lot already. Yeah. Oh, I, I do want to ask before we get into that, like what's your writing regimen? Cause as someone, you know, I, I adore stand up and it's one of my favorite mediums, but I'm writing right now and, and I want to perform, but I want to do it the right way. And not just be think I have a platform. People are going to watch. Uh -huh. It's like, I want to be good. So yeah. What are your kind of writing, um, I guess habits, you know? Okay. Even though I, I write a lot, I don't like sit down. Everyone's different. You yeah. know, I think Seinfeld still sits down, has a egg timer and, and writes and there's no right or wrong way. That's like his method. So it's yeah. like whatever works for you. For me, I've gotten to the point where I've just been doing it so long. I live life and I, I'm good at recognizing a novel idea and I always have my phone with me. So then I'll just jot down enough words to kind of capture whatever happened just so I capture the idea and don't lose it. And I just keep on adding to this note called new bits or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I have shows, I have shows all throughout the week. I kind of know what shows, let me try a few of them on. And then if it's like a really, really good show, I can inject a little bit of new stuff, but I have to deliver a certain type of quality show. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if it's, I have a show called Fahim works on stuff and his friends drop by I do that once a month at the comedy store and that's like pure spaghetti. So I just, <laughs> so I just, you're just throwing I a, shit at totally. the wall. So I host it. I have friends come on and do regular sets, but I MC. So I go in between and I do seven, 10 minutes of just like random ass ideas that I've had for the month. Oh, that's cool. And I put that's it on really YouTube smart. actually. So people yeah. can kind of see the process, how the sausage gets made. And that's just fun spaghetti style. How but, would you, yeah. like a solid bit, how long would it take you to then massage that into okay this idea i tried for the first time and then a massage into it it's in my act and it kills the process how long like it, yeah it, like the massage i know it's like different every time but the feedback you look for i guess it depends on how baked it is when it comes out like okay. if it's mm -hmm. pretty great from the start then you're doing some fine tweaks and then maybe another part to it you add and it gets bigger and bigger yeah some of it you're like okay there's a kernel there i'm missing a word it takes more massaging especially if it's like edgy or yeah. it's political and divisive, then that's going to take more massaging because you're work, you're walking a tightrope. Yeah, yeah. And one one wrong word, people will eject, even though they're not hearing your overall message. So that'll take more kind of fine tuning. But sometimes you have just the silly dumb thing that's great out the gate, and that doesn't take as much time. Yeah. Do you have a town that you go to or a city where it's like, oh, they don't get offended as much as others? You know what's crazy is like like Republicans. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, like yeah. The, red, the red states. They really, you can get away with murder, literally. <laughs> <laughs> you can get away with murder so long as you don't like bash Trump or something. Yeah. It's almost, they have one sacred cow, but anything <laughs> else you could joke about. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, look, I consider myself liberal and Democrat and stuff like that, but there are so many landmines or massaging that you got to do, even though you're clearly joking and you've got to massage it a certain way. But, but like in certain residues, like, I'm here for anything except for you making fun of Trump. <laughs> Dude, Not my God, I'll tell you that much. Come on. Yeah. That's funny. I know because in your special, you filmed it at the comedy store yeah. here in LA, but you go like in your third act, you go, can I try some edgy stuff with you? And the room kind of goes, yeah, except for there's there's one person that goes, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, they were from Texas. <laughs> that was a Georgia guy right there. Dude, yeah, no, it's it just funny, like the different sort of, you know, atmospheres yeah of, if i was in alabama i could just like go on to oh you wouldn't even have to ask prep them yeah right yeah do you have a this is very nerdy for just me like do you have like a content schedule you try to stick to as well as okay i have to get this many clips out that means i have to go to this many places and do you bring your own camera yeah yeah, yeah 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 so when i do weekends and stuff i have my own camera like i plug into the the board in the back for the mic audio and then yeah. i have another 
like recorder on a stool to capture laughs and you mix it and post. So it like sounds good. So yeah, I record my sets. That's part of the gig. I mean, the beauty of standup is that it is so people overthink it, you know, especially yeah. when making a standup special and stuff. It's not Dunkirk. It's, it's, it's a guy <laughs> or a girl in a microphone. You've done the work with the standup bits, take the lens cap off, have good audio. That's pretty much all you need to do. And yeah. Especially everything is so bite-sized nowadays with clips. Exactly. I don't like having all these crazy cuts is actually, I don't think that helps you. I think oh, it hurts no. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I record the sets and all that. That's part of the gig now. And I, you know, I'm figuring it out. What sucks is you have it figured out and then IG changes the algorithm and you go, okay, I got to <laughs> figure out a new way to, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, the yeah, posting yeah. schedule is not working. I got to figure out the new trick. There, there are people that like go on, oh, I've seen it on TikTok where they go, I just had a call with uh, Instagram. This is what they're looking for. And everyone's just like, what the hell? This is a full-time job. Bro, now. I just want to do stand up, yeah. but, but I feel like I'm a programmer or some shit. Yeah. You have to be everything. You have to be an editor. You have to be a captioner. I have to, oh, have you heard what, uh, you got to do this on Instagram now. You got to do yeah. Adafi and then you got to do Infi. It's, it's, yeah. I mean, we'll put up clips from this podcast and you know, it's the same thing. It's I'll, I'll take a story and sometimes I'll rearrange the story based on whatever the algorithm wants. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, I know for watch time at the beginning, I need to ask this question, then hit him with the best joke, even though that joke's later, I'll bring it here. Like it's wild. Yeah. It's like, there's just this all knowing algorithm, like just trying to satiate the algorithm. It was like the dad I, I never like had, this. you know, <laughs> the dad, you like never a little had. bit of discipline feels good. Algorithm. Oh. Do you like it? <laughs> yes. I'll yeah. share it. <laughs> do you have a, a known well that you can go back to where it's like, oh, people really like this guy, like it, whether it's, I don't know, a certain type of. I mean, there's like better, like I have, I have jokes. Like I recorded a thing that's pretty much my new hour and I have that in the hopper and so I'm slowly, those are like really tight jokes I've been working on for a yeah. long time. Yeah. So I'll release a little bit of those and then I have my working on stuff and that satiates a different type of audience. So I'm kind of a little more precious with the stuff that I've I've like worked really hard on. I don't want to release all that, but I, that's a well I can go to. I don't want to release all of it out at once. You got to be strategic about it. No, 100%. Yeah. I just feel like sometimes we get pigeonholed even in the topics that we talk about because it's like, I know this is going to go viral. So it's, we'll talk about this more, even though yeah. I think that this random thing is a lot more funny. Yeah. Like we get pigeonholed a little bit into relationship type quite, I don't know. It's just very easy. And people are like, oh yeah, me and my boyfriend do that too. Well, it's, everyone's going through that. Yeah. You know, so that's why it does. That's what I've noticed as well. Something I have stand up bits about relationships or something, and that is going to do way better than a niche Ninja Turtles joke that I have <laughs> that I yeah. personally love yeah. more than this relationship thing. But I understand more people will identify and see themselves in the relationship than some strange observation about the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's definitely, yeah, it's that balance of one for you, two to for you, one totally, for me, I guess. Totally. Yeah. And you're like, well, one guy's really going to like this one, but Actually, yeah, I do it for him. That's really interesting. When, um, at what point in your life did stand up take over financially where it's like, oh, I can support myself? You know, okay. So I got that engineering degree from University of Washington and then I supplied oh, yeah, Go Huskies, right? Fuck, man. You know your shit, dude. It's whatever, man. <laughs> Bro, how did you know that? <laughs> I mean, I, I've watched one game before, so <laughs> I think we're good. So then I just applied to jobs in SoCal because I knew I wanted to do stand up. So was, you got to go to New York or LA at the time. Yeah. yeah. And I go, oh, my parents are still in Seattle. Let me just do, keep it West Coast. Got a job at Long Beach, Boeing. So I'm doing the day job by night or by day and then stand up at night for about three and a half years. And the goal is to leave. And eventually I got to a point, I had enough things going on. Like I got really far in this NBC stand up for diversity thing. And then I got a bunch of college gigs from that. And so that was some money. And then I got this guest starring role on Chuck while I was still working at Boeing. Oh, nice. So that was like a big acting thing. Oh, you and Papa were at the same location? Well, uh, oh, well, you were no, in LA. No, I was in LA. Oh, gotcha. He, yeah, he was in Everett. He was in Everett. Classic. Still yeah. have no idea where Everett is. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. Man. Yeah, we're not even going to ask. Man. Yeah, come on. Just nod. Just nod. Thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you don't have a website right now in this, in this ether of the internet um, era of earth, you are an idiot. I want to say that first and foremost. And the easiest way to have your own website is what, Jared? Squarespace, obviously. That was all you're going to add? Okay, I guess I'm doing this. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you need to sell something. You need to promote yourself. You need to create your online image. What are you going to do that with? A website, huh? 
And where, what's the easiest tool to use to create a website? Squarespace. Maybe you have an idea. You've got a book. You've got you've got a movie you want to promote. Maybe, uh, just yourself. Maybe you want to. Uh, uh, you love cats. Create a website about it. And if I don't see you making a website about it, why I ought to? Well, Zach, that's not all I have to offer. I actually use Squarespace for my music. That's where I post information about upcoming releases. I post music videos on there. Don't make I, this about yourself. This is about Squarespace, okay? I'm saying that Can we just I give Squarespace the what they... Uh, uh, Squarespace is nice enough to sponsor us. You think we could talk about them instead of you, huh? I'm saying Say sorry to Squarespace. Say product. sorry to Squarespace. I'm not saying sorry. I'm saying thank you, Squarespace, because you made it so easy to build a website. You know, I took a coding class when I was in college, and I could barely make a, a title card, you know, a, a title uh, heading. And with Squarespace... I was guess able you did it in seconds. Seconds, and it's beautiful, and it's integrated for both desktop and mobile devices. And of course, it, it is. And it's they, they've got a down pack. If you want the best website in the world, you got to create it with Squarespace. That's that's it's simple. Okay, do it. I honestly think that one of the most important tools that Squarespace offers is its e-commerce feature, right? Whatever you're selling, they have templates for you to start right off the bat with. You can manage inventory. It's a super easy check. Like I've been process. I've been selling pictures of your mom's feet online and I've had no way to like it's just the checkout process was a joke on the old website builders I was using, but Squarespace, pictures of your mom's feet are flying off the shelves, buddy. Flying off the shelves. I'm really glad that's working out for you, but we're going to have a discussion later about this. Yeah. Not that kind of discussion. Wow. Head to squarespace.com slash dropouts for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code dropouts to get 10% off your first purchase. 10% off? 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Do it now or will what? Be really upset that you didn't build your own website. My my, I was going to be more violent with it, but that's probably better. Um, back to the show. So I was half stepping it for a while, three and a half years, and then I got this MTV show. I was on this show called Disaster Date. Oh, I, I oh I might wait, I remember back in the day. Yeah, there's like boiling points for dating where you're just like a terrible date. Yeah, and you see how long the girl can last on it for. Yeah, and then you give them a dollar a minute. So if she lasted 37 minutes. You go, you got $37. That's even nice. That's more, that's, that's more degrading. Yeah, that, more, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I'll do it for free. This is. This. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Thanks for my empanada. <laughs> a um, dollar a minute? A free meal. So I did that. Or, okay, so they needed me for three months. So I told work, I go, I, I'll be gone for three months and then I need to be, come back. And they wouldn't let me take that much time off. So I'm like, fuck, this is a crossroads of my life. Uh, yeah. I have enough stuff going on. I think, I think this is, I got to make the leap now. So then I left. I left Boeing. Look at me now. <laughs> In our living I'm next room. To a, I'm next to a gumball machine, dude. <laughs> You're doing well. You're going to leave here and go, why? Well, well, it's fine. Yeah, it's like, I called Boeing I'm up immediately. I got made a huge mistake. Can I come back? <laughs> you got to call your dad. No, nope. you figured it out. Let's, okay, so that was a weird show. Sometimes I would be a terrible date. You know, I'd smell their hair. You'd have something, a laundry list of things that they hated, and you would just do all those things to make them hate you. But the psychology of dating is weird. Sometimes these girls afterwards, they would want to go on a real date with me afterwards. Oh, even though I was being terrible <laughs> and like, I'm a nice guy. Those are so, the girls that have issues. <laughs> yeah, I guess. No, so. I, I've recently done a dating show where same thing. You had to go in and be terrible. And I would just obviously satirically gaslight them. But in the moment, I'm just like being a terrible person. And then afterwards it's like, hi, oh, what's yeah. I'm like, oh, you got it. Yeah. It yeah. was bizarre. It I stems felt from bad something. Because because I'm I would be like, my baseline is nice. Yeah. And I'm playing this version of an asshole or whatever. And I'm like outside my body looking in, I go, Oh, they like they like asshole more than interesting. Than Jared, we gotta work on We gotta be assholes? Yeah. Yeah. Assholes. yeah. yeah. Here, pretend pretend Fahim over here is the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. And Hi. I heard you're bullied. Um, <laughs> where'd you hear it? I like that. I like that it's a first date, and that's, yeah, that's what she heard. I heard it was from me. I told her. Uh, -huh. uh no, I was definitely the bullier. Oh, yeah, that's stupid. Hot. Stupid. What would you do to him? Uh, I I'd beat the hell out of him. <laughs> like freaking face? nerd. Like what part of his body? Um, like his lower back. Oh, does he have back problems now? Totally. He gets to see a chiropractor every month. That's so fucking hot. Yeah. Every month. I'll bully you. I'll, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll break your back. Whoa. <laughs> How? Uh, listen, I. Uh, the smile. You got to tone down the smile. <laughs> I can't. 
can't, dude. Yeah, you smiling. Do you like me? I don't like that. No. It seems you're, like you're into me. You're freaking ugly. He is a oh my God, tell me how ugly I am. He's got a resting dude. smile, which which <laughs> if you're near another primate, like it tear like cause they, they everybody <laughs> They Dude, think they think he's being aggressive. I yeah, I can't go to the L.A. Zoo because I just get the gorillas <laughs> riled up. Really? Oh yeah. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you remember Harambe? Oh yeah. Who do you think got him all brown? Yeah. Shit, dude. Actually, though, you got to wear a mask. <laughs> he's from Cincinnati. So I am. The pandemic C- was great for him then, huh? Oh, oh, dude. Killing you should have seen the women that almost went on a date with him. Jeez. Because yeah. the thing is, it covered up my smile, which can be creepy, but. I got smile like kind eyes. And so they were love that. Yo, yeah, sunglasses. You have a mask and sunglasses. <laughs> like, yo, this guy's off the charts. That cool. guy's going to pull. <laughs> Just like Michael Jackson, pretty much. Basically, you know. And he and pulled all the ladies. Had had the sparkly gloves and everything. Yeah. I went out and got, it was a big fedora phase for me as well. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> now that you're back on the scene of uh, poles and holes, are you on the apps? I'm on the apps, yeah. Hell yeah, which one? Which one's getting you some play? All of them, baby. What's your favorite though? I find that I I have the most success on like Raya and Hinge. Cool. What are you looking for? You're scrolling. I'm scrolling. Are Are you in the devil stage of you know? Let's just get the rocks off. Or are you Are you looking for someone you can take home to? Boeing? I'm open to Papa. everything, but like, I'm open to everything. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. I my heart is open to that though. Yeah. I think before when I was coming up stand up i was living in a studio apartment in k-town i was keeping my expenses really low kind of what i wasn't on as solid footing career and financial wise as i am now yeah so that door to my heart wasn't even available Mm -mm. because i I on the prize everything else is a distraction exactly but now i'm doing better and i am open to that i'm not seeking it out i don't have this like biological clock where i'm like i need to find the one i need to get married i need to get my life on track yeah but i'm open to it yeah financially you can order appetizer and i didn't think of it total and dessert oh hell yeah i bookend it dude what's that like (laughs) it's pretty great dude i mean that's what i'm working towards right now everything else is a distraction sometimes i go to a restaurant by myself just as a flex you know where there's hot chicks i get an appetizer and i look around and then i get it i get an entree and then i get a dessert and then I get an entree to go. And, who even cares? and I put sunglasses on and I go. And then you leave ladies. it on the table. <laughs> Just because you can. I go, I don't even need it. Exactly. Do you, um, when growing up, were you a water and entree family or were you an appetizer dessert family? We weren't all, we were purely entree. <laughs> yeah, us too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's wild because I, you know, you go out. I remember when I was little, I'd go out with like my, my rich friends and they're like, hey, what are you guys thinking for appetizers? I was like, I've never even looked at that part of the menu. Unless <laughs> it's, it's like going to be my full meal. Yeah, 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 my, yeah. My parents don't even let me look at that part of the menu. No they would chance. hit me. Yeah, I don't even know what an appetizer is. I'm still kind of in that headset where, like, when we go out to eat with friends and people go, "What do you want for an appetizer?" I'm like, "What the hell is going on? Who won the lottery here?" What apps? What's your go-to apps if you can? Uh, probably Hinge. I just feel like. Oh no! no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just bringing it back. Oh, oh nice. You know, I, f- I forgot about that. Probably. Uh, I like a nice buffalo wing. Ooh. You get ten on the table. You throw three. Everybody's here's, way. Here's the trouble, though. It's kind of a messy start. It's a very meal. mess. I feel like it's, it's a binary. Messy. Is this a date or are we just hanging out? If it's a date, I'm not going back. I, I, like, I felt like a girl who was crushed. <laughs> like you just asking that. Like, <laughs> is, is this, this a, a date, date or are we just hanging, hanging out? out? Like, I thought it was a date. <laughs> I would have like, gotten wings then. Yeah. Like I like you even more now. Like he just thought we were hanging out. Oh no. no if it's a date, you go calamari, I think. I'm a big calamari guy. Well. Calamari is but good. But there's some people who are just unsettled. They don't do the calamari. And those aren't people you want to be in a relationship with because they're children, you know? <laughs> Whoa. That's a good way of thinking about yeah. it. It's like weeding out. If you can't handle calamari, you're not going to be able to handle that's my a Maryland, domestic abuse. That, that's a Marilyn Monroe quote, I believe, right? <laughs> if you can't handle me at my calamari. You'll be able to handle me at my domestic abuse? Yeah. Yeah, I think that was her. Um, same, same with Brussels sprouts. Those, those had a glow up, huh? Those, oh, oh my god! We had some dude. today, didn't we, dude? We, yeah, it was one of our friends' birthdays today. We went out for brunch, and it was the best Brussels sprouts I think that have ever been made. Here's my idea for Brussels sprouts: the best part of it is the flaky, outer, mm. crispy. Oh yeah, it gets mushy as you get to the center of the earth, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> what if it's a, a plate that's just pure Brussels sprout flakes? Ooh, all flakes. Now we're talking. Hear me out. Brussels chips, bro. <laughs> that you ever you ever hear of? Is this the, a Shark Tank? The, the term <laughs> billion dollar idea. Alyssa, would, would you invest? Call in Mark that? Cuban. Yeah, call Mark. Okay. DM him if we don't have his number. I don't want to speed uh, Mark, email us. his info page at the Mavericks if you can't get that. Okay. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah, I'd invest. Brussels flakes. That's oh yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay, hear me out on this. Okay, we have. 
I'm guessing 40 flakes on there. This is a nice place. And then we get the shaved Parmesan and just put one layer on top of each like crut like whoa each flake mm. gets its own yeah yeah parmesan hat yeah and then, and then a crispy you throw that in the gullet you're having yourself a a nice wednesday we gotta we gotta call some michelin star restaurant you know i want it to be that. on chef's chef's table that show they make yeah. everything look like it's life or death but they're just <laughs> yeah. making pizzas <laughs> the guy's just like i knew god talked to me and i had to have i had to make pizzas <laughs> this oh, is my life's calling yeah. i mean the war the way even that gordon ramsay speaks to people over you know a parfait Dude, <laughs> that guy's that guy's got to be taken down. The the famous like idiot sandwich like between two pieces of bread. It's just like they were on. This is not common knowledge. They're on the way to get him, and then found Osama in the same house and decided to take him out. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of people know that. What are you talking? About? They're going to get Ramsey. Oh, okay. The way he speaks to people. But um, even on like, Be- have you seen Beat Bobby Flay? That's one of his favorite really? shows. Nah. But Whoa. you would think they're battling to the death like whoever loses that they're they're getting their head chopped off with yes. the, the meat cleaver even the food competition shows is just when they have to go home especially the ones with the kids <laughs> the kids the kids the kids that do they tone the it down to do they tone, no they no. They, they go harder they go wait you have to dude the the amount of pressure that they put these kids under there's like a clip that always like circulates they're making like a some sort of sculpture out of uh like rice crispy treat things like the the flintstone rainbow whatever she puts it up it's like counting down buzzer beater she puts it up the column falls and the kid just breaks down in tears like right there you just saw years of psychological trauma that's gonna have to be dealt with with a lot of therapy that'd be great if the kid that loses they have to like they bring their parents in and they they get divorced because they lost (laughs) Maybe they go, that's how I lost my can't. dad. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. And they have suitcases and you see your mom and dad just kind of roll their luggage separately. Oh. And it's all because your souffle sucked. Um, and they look at you and they go, it is your fault. <laughs> and then they go separate ways. So my mom has been divorced twice. And the second time it was from a man who originally proposed at a Margaritaville. And I just want to know why you think she didn't know that it wasn't going to last. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> but was this a nice Margaritaville? Because there's one in New York that's multiple stories and stuff. It looks it looks like corporate, like Margaritaville HQ. No. It wasn't that one? <laughs> Definitely it wasn't not that, that one. one. <laughs> which, which one? It was the one in Vegas. That's pretty cool though too, right? I mean, they I met guess. three times on eHarmony and then he flew out and got on one knee on the stage of Margaritaville. But Dude, your sure, mom whatever. really said, let me gamble on love right now. Oh, and she and did not win. She lost. Yeah. But, uh, you know. She should have bet on black. Right? Totally. Exactly. <laughs> He's a white guy. Yeah. Well, can't find it? love with, with white skinned people anymore. I've been saying hey, that. Hey, he said years. it. He said it now. <laughs> yeah, he, it's okay. <laughs> we mouth it whatever. It's like, whoa, this AI is you insane. Dub it into me. <laughs> My career's over. You watch his podcast, it's just thirty seconds of like you seeming very racist. <laughs> and we're like you're like I didn't say I any things. of this. <laughs> I guess I I don't I don't think I said the N word, but there I am. <laughs> um Alyssa, when's the last time you said it? Never. Okay, just checking back. <laughs> You got to be on your toes. No, she's our yeah, she's our assistant. Like if she spouts it once, she's out of here. So I, I check in every day. Promise. <laughs> it's a tight ship. Promise. Okay, she's good. Very. Good. Um, yeah, she's been really striking out with men her entire life. I was wondering if do you, you do the apps? I do. Which ones are your go-to? Um, I'm on Hinge only, but I'm only on Raya because I waited two years to get on it, so I just can't not be on it. You got to. Yeah. So. You know what's fun? Okay, this happened one time. I went on a date with a girl. Was not great, you know. Mm. Was it Alyssa? Class. <laughs> now you know what? I'll, okay, I talked about it on this this other podcast, but it comes out later. So it's one of those. It's almost like a threes company episode or some shit. Where like we're there for different reasons. I was. We met on Raya, and then it wasn't until like halfway through the date that I re- she goes like, "Oh, so why do you use the app?" And I'm like, uh, "Dating." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, of course. Like everybody. Why, why do you use the dating app? Yes, exactly. It's like getting Grubhub. They're like, why did you use this? It's like, I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. So then she's like, oh, like I, I use it to make friends. I'm meeting a lot of cool people. And I'm like, okay. All right. Oh, cool. So, I mean, yeah. I'm evolved. I'm like, okay, my night's ruined. Let me, <laughs> let me just, yeah. I'm burying it. I'm being pleasant. I'm yeah. just going to carry on with whatever's left of the night and pay, pay for dinner and it's whatever. Which it's is a, wild, even though she just said you were friends. It's okay, whatever. Yeah, then she's like, oh, yeah, next time we should do bowling. Oh and, my and God. And then that's when I had to kind of, no. I was like, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if there's going to be, I don't know if I want to. 
Yeah. You know, I'm kind of on here for dating. Like, I'm trying I to pin you down, do. not pins down. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, what's going on? Yeah. And then she's like, oh, you don't want to hang out? I'm like, uh, I think we just have different. <laughs> I'm on it for a different reason. Yeah. Yeah. Does she take that well? Uh, you know, okay. She should have just accepted it for that. But she's like, you know, I think you should really be more open-minded when it comes to like, Give me a break. Being friends with people. That's the estrogen talking. I know. <laughs> well, I want to be like getting friend zoned is for your 20s. Like I don't have, I go, I, like, I wanted to be like, I don't have time for my yeah. best friends. Oh yeah. yeah. You're, you think you're I have time? Up yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm good. Like the friends you have now are the friends you'll have to the day you die. But I don't even have enough time. I want I don't have time to hang out with the people that I love the most. Yeah. You know, like I like these people. Exactly. <laughs> I have no idea who the hell you are and yeah, I still yeah, took yeah, out yeah, time. Yeah. Like, you kind of ruined my night and like, I don't want to. <laughs> so yeah. So that was just kind of interesting. Is it awkward in your thirties when someone tries to spark up a new friendship and you're like, you know, we both have reached our cap. It has, no- to, it has to be very convenient. That's yeah. the thing. Like, because you're so busy and you're already stretched so thin that you have to know them from work or it's your, your paths are kind of already like that. Yeah. I can't make friends with someone in Santa Monica. <laughs> you oh, know? Like I'm too, no. It's too far. Oh. Way too far. Anybody, they're, they're in the Valley. All right. Maybe, maybe we can do something. Yeah, that's you, a thing. Anything like outside of the Valley, I think on the dating apps, my, uh, my radius or whatever is like three miles because it's just like, whatever is within a stone's throw I can handle. I'd rather meet up with a four. That's a, you know, a stone skip away than a, <laughs> than a 10 by the beach. Any oh, day of the dude. week. Oh, the 405. I mean, I'm flaccid thinking about it. <laughs> it's disgusting. I don't care who you are. I'm not out there. I wouldn't drive down the 405 to see my parents. Like, oh, it's the middle of the summer. It's like you get down there. It's like everything's sweaty anyway. What are we going to do here? You're going to go down. It's not going to be fun. Let's let's never see each other again. What about you, Alyssa? When's the last time you went down on someone? <laughs> oh, my mom watches this. <laughs> That's why I ask her all these. Her mom watches this. And then every week I say something just heinous enough where her mom's like, what are you doing out in LA? Because you got- <laughs> like come back. Yeah, no, you had come in your back last week, right? Holy shit. No, no, you got triple team. I don't remember what it was. Anyway, your mom will text you about it. Um, <laughs> what if her mom was like, I want to know, answer him. <laughs> like, whoa, mom, you're pretty cool. <laughs> Is your mom pretty cool? She'd be okay with it? Yeah, she's pretty cool. She wants you to have a child though, right? Well, yeah. Is she open to Jared inseminating you? Why no. me? <laughs> Why not you? Why not you? I'm busy. Guys, I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> I've, I've entered the insist. chat. I actually brought, I just, I, I thought you guys might ask this. So I pre did it before I got in. Oh. I'll leave the cup here. That is every, almost- every pot I do, I just, you know, I'm like, here's some jizz, like in case. It's fun. We do this game. Well, well, <laughs> well what are you about? To we say? can add you into it where, you know, we both experience inside a cup, but we'll add yours in there. Bop, 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 bop. She's Ooh. sleeping. Turkey baster. How you doing? And it's, it's a real like, Russian who, roulette. Who, who's is it? Yeah. Who yeah, done yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a classic who done it. <laughs> if, if it grows up working for Boeing, we'll know. We'll know. <laughs> we'll, we'll know it's yours. You know? <laughs> That's if it comes out smiling, we'll know. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> if it comes out like the yeah. fucking Joker. <laughs> funny, just like a really gummy smile coming out. Like. <laughs> She's like, dang it. <laughs> I hope it was the Boeing one. So um, are you on the apps too? Yeah. Which ones do you do or like? Uh, oh, well, <laughs> that's funny. Anyway, uh, Hinge, I think is the only one I'm really on. I like Hinge because it's uh, if you like someone, they can know. Whereas the other ones are, it's like a submarine. Both Dude. keys have to turn before you even are allowed to talk to each other. Yeah. And also Bumble, I just feel like it's not women's natural state to initiate conversation and pursue. Not so you'll get so many all. matches that expire. Yep. I remember when I used to be on Bumble. Yeah, it would just be, you match with this many people and then- they None of them said say anything. Thank you. Or or the ones that did, they would just go, hey. You know, it's like there's all that like stigma around like guys on when Tinder first came out. Yeah. They had to have the most creative, clever pickup lines. Like Which, a poem tailor made for it, Cheryl. <laughs> we need to have like a Sadie Hawkins like month. Ooh. Where all the women come towards us. I kind of mm. like that. Or maybe the women do go towards guys and it's just not us. It's just that. <laughs> no, that can't be it. No, no, no we're no. We're cream of the crop, aren't totally. we? Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the it's funny how the environment of like dating apps is like hinge is kind of like where you actually get results. Bumble is just like, I feel like just an ego boost, honestly, for both parties. And then Tinder I've found is just a girl or a place for girls to sell their OnlyFans. Like my God, dude, totally. <laughs> <laughs> for real, it's crazy. I think I think, you know, you hear the trope of like dating's hard from women. You hear it from guys as well. But I think it's doubly or triply hard for us because there's so much bullshit that we have to navigate. Mm. There's there's the girls promoting their OnlyFans. 
there's the girls in travel mode from Ukraine <laughs> trying to like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to get a green card or something. They're still, yeah, they just have the little travel button on. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. yes. Uh, there's just like all these kind of like fake red herrings that aren't real profiles. Oh, yeah. Whereas I don't think there's a lot of that. Like every guy's a guy, like no guy. It is Daryl. It is, yeah. Like, that's Daryl. You swipe yeah, on Daryl, you you're, get Daryl. You're getting Daryl. He's not tricking you, holding a fish. Like, he wants to meet up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. This could be you. <laughs> this, could, this could be us hooking up, you know? Yeah. Dude, and then eventually when you do find, like, a real one on the other side, you know, it's just navigating that conversation is like a minefield it's a you had a really funny bit in your your special about it. it's like you can't be too excited you can't use the wrong punctuation you know bro you, <laughs> it's like the laser field it's it's <laughs> yeah. crazy one because they're just so skittish especially because they don't know you they don't know your intentions and they uh -huh. get so many messages then, already yeah that it's and, so easy to fuck up and, and then just lose interest and if you lead with a joke and then they're also funny and they do a joke then you're doing bits for well you gotta knows? get you gotta get off that like like no it's yeah when but it's to hard. eject yeah 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 because <laughs> then you have an improv 101 part <laughs> yeah you're just like <laughs> you're not getting anywhere you're, like, you're just yes anding until <laughs> one of you what, ghosts each what, other exactly until one of you just gets tired and it's like ah. I, I try to do that once or twice to get a sense of their personality and humor and then try to to move it like to number yeah because yeah. if you're just running bits because it's nice to have a nice moment and then move it to somewhere yeah, nice else to get some new ma outsource your material though. totally all my <laughs> jokes are just banter with women on <laughs> dating apps who eventually ghost <laughs> who eventually ghost yeah, yeah. no um, but i would know i came up with that bit because when i was dating before this girlfriend that i had you know i, I don't have it anymore <laughs> <laughs> but like i would just notice i would be things would be going great it's almost like you know that movie uh, day after tomorrow with yeah. Tom Cruise, uh -huh. where he like lives life and then dies, and then he learns from it and keeps on. It's like that with dating. It really you is. You go, okay, this punctuation fucked me up. Never uh -huh. again. Like, okay, this emoji fucked me up. Never again. But no, then okay, we joke too much. Never again. Yeah, <laughs> and you keep on learning, 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 learning. Dude. Like, it's like I'm an AI robot or some shit. <laughs> just machine learning, and then because I would just notice they would eject with all these little different things. Oh yeah, and then my whole mantra from all the stuff I learned was just like, what would Don Draper do? How would Don Draper text? Interesting. Not in a pretentious way, but like, he probably never too up with just enough, in. cool, and never too much, never w too eager. WW triple D, you know? Yeah, man. He'd probably meet up with him and do something that rhymes with his name. I don't know. Oh, God. <laughs> no, um, there's too many. Too many there's what? Too many women. Uh -huh. Can we talk about that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> When's well, it end? This is how Hitler started. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna you're gonna jump on this train. I'm very convincing. <laughs> I mean, we're just white. Like, at what point? Like, I don't know. You meet someone, and then it's like, well, there's a million more. Like, based on the ratio, I'm sure there's another one. So you think it's just too many options? We live yeah. in a culture of, of statistically. I shouldn't be able to go on my phone right now, and there'd be a probable chance of having someone come over like I, I should meet them in my village. We should be sharing a, a ham that that you they hunt that I hunted apparently. And then the the salad that they gathered. Yeah. You know. Totally. Women don't gather anymore. What's up with that, Alyssa? <laughs> That's crazy. You know, what if this is like the first stand up bit that you do? You, you have like a like a leather jumpsuit and you're like, women don't gather anymore. <laughs> People just don't get it. Alyssa, what's up with that? I yeah, don't how know. Come, how come I'm don't gather? very independent. I gather. Oh. oh, well, gather's a commutative thing, so it can't be independent. You're doing it for us. Yeah, but I'm doing it by myself. What do we, okay, what, what do we need to do to get you women, to do bed you women? <laughs> That's definitely a term to use. That's definitely. What are we doing wrong here? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like if you find the right one, the punctuation doesn't even matter. Well, exactly. You just haven't found the right one yet. Mm. Do you have an automatic red flag emoji? Like if if a guy sends it to you, yeah, the water. Okay, well, okay. That's pretty you're, you're on a different app. But <laughs> what if he was like, I just got out of the pool and did that? Would that be okay? No, because <laughs> no. it's got different meanings. And then you across. text back. Speaking of pool, I think I just pulled up in my pants. No, you know? oh, because um, of how hot he is. Don't. No, I don't mind emojis, so I don't. I don't know. Never been an emoji guy. I like emojis. Okay. It makes Sorry. it seem interesting. You're interested in the conversation, but okay. like, obviously not like five of them, but like a right. laughing Four's emoji. fine though, right? Four is <laughs> fine. But it's just kind of funny. Even that, like not five of them. Yeah. Like why is there's five? a limit? 
Look, maybe I love five emojis. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'm trying to tell a story. What if I thought Through your pictures. joke was really funny? Yeah. How am I supposed to get the end of this three-act play if I don't use the horse? Uh-huh. <laughs> you tell me I got to put a squid in there because it means more? It's just an act break. Anyway. I want to do something like random that make no sense. Like the guy yeah. welding emoji. Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. can't wait for dinner tonight. This welding, <laughs> welding. guy emoji. <laughs> then you got to gaslight the hell out of her where she <laughs> thinks it's like, what? wait, you don't know what this means? Yeah. Oh, you thought it was random? No, I'm no, going to no. guess like the shit. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I told you. I, I kind of want to do an experiment now where you kind of like open the, the conversation with like hieroglyphs, you know, of these emojis where it tells hey, a but, full but story. What? You're having enough trouble on the apps? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not throw in another language. Don't, don't make it Another ancient language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right. Where do you, you're right. What do you think you're messing up right now? I mean, this, is, this guy's got three or four apps. He can help you out. Where do I think? I I'm mean, going? I'm not the best either. I just kind of like <laughs> learn with each one. I'm, I'm like doing okay. So you've been ghosted as of recent. Where do I think I'm messing up? Consistently. I feel no. like that'd be a good idea for a show as well. Just pulling up the receipts yeah. and like you have a brain trust of men and women and you pull it up on a screen and it's like, where did it go wrong? Can you oh, airplay to it, the it, TV? Uh, not that one. Your hinge. No. And you have a bunch of experts go, okay, I wouldn't have done this. I, I, you should have done this, blah, blah, blah. Break you, it down. It's like case studies. What, oh, do you have an opening line? I mean, something simple. Again, because you don't want to do too much. No. I'll do, hey, whatever the name is. Okay, oh, that's good. people like their simple. names. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Or, or their name, exclamation point. I think I know where I mess up. I genuinely love like getting to, uh, getting to know people. And so I just let the conversation go on for way too long <laughs> before we even like go on the first date or even like get the number. That's where I, I go wrong. I used to do that. Yeah. I used to just talk for way too long. <laughs> yep. Improv 101, like all that shit. You're in. You're uh-huh. like, kind of. Like I know she has brothers and like I know way too much. And like, no. <laughs> but I, uh, I got to the point now where it's uh, you banter for a little bit, get one comedic moment, and then. We should we should hang out sometime or meet up, like yep. make plans, and then move it to a phone number. There you go. And then that becomes a little more real rather than just in a queue on a dating app. Yeah. Yeah. And Wait. it's a lot of them don't give the number, and that's just statistics, and that's fine. Then they were never serious about meeting up anyways, and that's not you. Very true. That's not you. It's not you. It's not your fault. It's like Goodwill Hunting. You start crying. <laughs> Was that, didn't it's you have a date yesterday? It's not, it's not your fault. Did you what? have a date yesterday? No. She had to postpone it. Um now to Monday. Like she got strep throat again. I don't know. She gets in a, she's on her period a lot this month. <laughs> what, a, what, what was the excuse? Um, she forgot it was her like friend's birthday and they had like Classic. a wine night or something. Oh, wine think. night. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Come on. You can't, yeah. you, you can't, can't skip that for the love of your life. Wine, wine night. night. So how do you become the guy where it's worth it to skip wine night? That's what we got to figure out. You know? Well, I feel like you have to go on the first date. Yeah. You know, like second date, if she skipped wine night, then we got we got problems. Yeah. <laughs> um, we went to brunch earlier with a with a guy. Um, Jared has a crush on this girl with a guy that's, I mean, <laughs> reading her the Constitution through her labia. Like this guy is getting into her. You know what I mean? God damn, dude! <laughs> this guy is Whoa. John Hancock. Um, so he's pretty educated. He knows his stuff. Oh, he knows. I mean, he'll know the inside of her better than Jared ever will. If that's what you mean. Did that, how did that feel to like know he was there? He's a great guy. I don't have anything against him. Well, you don't have anything I'm, against her, especially your body either. Uh, and that's okay. Do yeah. you love her? Do I love? No, I don't love her. Okay, we're just making sure. Sorry about that. That's brutal. That's all right. I know he. The, this, is the, about, the, this is about him. The we, guy walks up. He is. He's a great guy. Super nice. Super super funny. Uh, but Zach, he walks up and Zach just the first thing he goes, he's like plowing her. <laughs> I was yes. like, I was like, cool. He's like just railing the shit out of her. I was like, thanks, dude. I just no. imagine you have like one rose as well. <laughs> That's like wilting. That is a thing. You are romantic. Good luck. Good luck with that. I need all of it. So thank you. Wait, this girl on Monday though. Huh? What, what, uh, how's the banter been? Uh, far and few between. Oh yeah, brother. You're not meeting so, up Monday, are you? Probably not. What do you do? So once you do convert it to text and you're talking a bit, what's your move? Do you do drinks? Do you do dinner? Do you do some hike? The, uh, that's a good question. Usually I've like gone out for dinner drinks, you know, um, I, uh, I like the idea of going on an activity so I, or doing an activity. So I think that's what we're going to do for this. Honestly, it's like stand-up material or something. Sometimes, you know, girls will be like, do you do this on all the dates or do you do? And like party wants to be like, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I mean, if I'm being completely just, honest. Do you think it's like jazz? I want to try new material on every date. <laughs> like if I like a person, I want it to go well. I'm not manipulating or anything, but there are like certain restaurants that are a better vibe than yeah. going yeah. to an Applebee's yeah. or something. Like and That's endearing. I don't know yeah. what look at it as a negative. Exactly. <laughs> it's true. It's like, do you do you say the same favorite color every time you go? And like you guys have a terrible <laughs> conversation, but let's hear it, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to think of something simple, always, like always, something first date you know, worthy. You know what date's terrible when you go, Do you like music? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have to listen and they're like, Frank Osh, and you're like, Yeah. But not even who do you like, just do you like music? <laughs> like what human doesn't like music? Oh yeah. You'd be, you'd be surprised. Really? Um, <laughs> who doesn't goes, like music? He goes, wait. You, don't, you hate music? No, no, no. I love music. Um, I've just, I, I have met some people that are just like, not my thing. You are know? they an alien? No, like, the, wildest one, basically. the wildest one was like, I don't like movies. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. You don't like storytelling? That's bizarre. One you know, time I was like, uh, I matched with the girl, you know? And then she goes, I don't like funny guys. What does that even mean? Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> why? <laughs> like, I understand if you're on all the time or yeah, something yeah, yeah. and that can oh, get grading, yeah. or, but like, who does funny is a great quality. Like I like girls who are funny. Yeah. I like funny people. Because you want a stoic guy? Don't I don't like get feeling it. Joy. I, yeah, I don't like feeling joy. I'm, I just like to look at my rock over there and he looks at me. Kind and, of. Yeah. Life is hard enough. There's yeah. a lot of sorrow and like things are mundane. Genocide. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. You need somebody to, you know, yeah. put a silver lining on that. Yeah. Not that's an opener. You would put sir, silver lining on my genocide or on genocide or something. Uh, cool. Lead with that, man. Yeah. So when's the last time she messaged you? Today. She actually had to reschedule it. <laughs> no, no, no. Hey, man. She had, no, no, no. Um, she had a mimosa thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't want to encroach on that because I know wine night's very important to her and I know mimosa. She drove I by a Bev, BevMo and just couldn't make it. <laughs> no. So we were supposed to go yesterday and then she was like, can we actually do next Tuesday? I was like, sure. And then she texted me today and was like, can we actually do Monday? So she moved it closer. Well, the good thing is she like is actively, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, cuz it's good when they they say I can't but how about this? Yeah. They yeah. offer she, the if alternative. She was, if she was just like can't do it and then just left it at that and it was left to me to be like okay, let's hey, reschedule. What about, yeah. Could could this be the one? Might be nice. <laughs> <laughs> you should you should open with that. <laughs> just so, like, listen, so you this, could be the one. This could be the one. Do you still ever think about that one girl that you like go oh, like it's definitely the one? Can you fuck <laughs> off? <laughs> All right. <laughs> what oh, what's the cliff note version of that though? Oh. Yeah, I have this theory when it comes to like competing with a guy who has money. Like when you're in your 20s and stuff, it's going to be much harder to compete with a guy in his mid 30s who's successful and stuff. Yeah. Because you'll take a girl to Cheesecake Factory or something and you're spending your life savings. Oh, it'll oh, set you yeah. back. Yes. Yeah. And and you still want to have sex and stuff. So you're like everything is hint you're so wound up. You're like I need I've spent half my money <laughs> and we've been on three dates. <laughs> I haven't gotten anywhere. Whereas a rich guy there's sushi on his yacht. Cool. He's not even trying to fuck. He just has so many models and like he'll hang out for a month. Just like you had a good time. Oh, you don't want to. That's fine. And that's so attractive. Huh. Like the guy who can afford all the stuff. He's not even trying to fuck me. Like they go for that. Whereas the cheesecake factory guy, they can, that's almost more attractive though. Like this guy blew half his savings. Yeah. To get you an appetizer. But and they can a smell the desperation though. That's the thing. Like, or they know they only have maybe like one more cheesecake in them. Yeah. And then they're they've tapped them out. Like the uh we went to this restaurant uh for the friends brunch today. Uh, it's called Castaway. It's up in Burbank, um, at like the top of the hill. Beautiful overlook. I was like, Oh, this is a great date spot. And then I looked at the menu and I was like, just the brunch menu was like pretty pricey. I was like, never bringing anyone here. <laughs> <laughs> So you got to think, I mean, you got to find a girl that's worth it or no, even better. You got to find a girl that's would suggest a Chili's because she just wants to hang out anyway. Whoa. Whoa. A girl who's down with Chili's. That just gave me chills. Oh, good yeah. one, man. <laughs> 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 no, Alyssa. Alyssa. Thank you, Alyssa. What I tell you about oh, that? Great timing. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> She's missed the button every time besides that, <laughs> but it's fine. Dude, I would have loved if she hit the want want button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's more deserving. Hit him with another fact. His recent film and TV credits include Whiskey Tango Foxtrot opposite Tina Fey. Hell yeah. How's Tina? Tina's great, dude. Is she? I don't know how recent it is. <laughs> Maybe it's whoever made my bio. You haven't worked in a long time, it says, but you got that one, right? <laughs> at, at one point in time, in the past, that was a recent credit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, d depending 
on how, your how term, you your relevancy recent? of recent. I yeah. mean, based on the- Time's a circle, dude. It, it, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. We shot it in New Mexico. It's funny to know that New Mexico doubles for Afghanistan. So that's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> so in your you element. In New- <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, it just feels like home. Yeah, where are my cousins at? <laughs> oh, wait, dad, or Zach's dad. Anyway. It was cool. You know, it happened around, remember when there was that blue dress, gold dress oh, thing going yeah. on? That was it was around in my that life, time. yeah. Oh, so. well, that was rippling around the set. So Tina's like, "It's a blue dress," and people are like, "No, it's a gold dress." Well, what was your what stance? You, yeah, what do you think? I thought it was blue. Okay, okay. good. That's disgusting. So your eyes work. I was, Fuck, I was white. Are you serious? Yeah, all I see is white. That makes sense. Yeah, you can see color. Oh yeah, weird. Hit him with another fact. Did his second special at the comedy store called Hat Trick. His other special is called There's No Business Like Show Business. Okay, oh, what, yeah. which one's better? I like Hat Trick because it's the most recent. Okay. It's the closest to, you know, I think you're never happy. Like you're your most happy as an artist with like what you're doing currently. Yeah. And that is as closest. You know, I, I put that out maybe eight months ago. Uh, the CISO one, I mean, or the one, the no business like show business that was for CISO. And then that went under and then Comedy Central bought it and it was on their YouTube. I don't know if I, there's a licensing thing. It may not be on YouTube anymore, but I like Hat Trick. Co- the Comedy Store is my home. I work on all my bits there. So I wanted to shoot it there and yeah. I shot it in all three rooms. There's that was a room. really cool concept. Thanks man. Yeah. yeah. Cause like I would see the comedy store and a lot of my friends specials and stuff, but they would treat it like a theater where they would dress it up where I'm like, nah, I just want to see it the way it is every night where I go. Yeah. Where you, I like it more grungy. Grungy. You see the waitresses, you see, it was very low, low footprint too. People didn't know that I was filming. So I wanted to capture like a real set. Not, uh, hey, we're shooting tonight and the crowd knows and they kind of juice it up. Yeah. I just wanted to be a fly on the wall type shooting. And I directed it too. I got it exactly the way I wanted. So it shows me in the original room and then going to the main room and then going to the belly room upstairs. Then Tarantino was there. It's crazy. Really? Yeah. He's like halfway in the special. He saw me in the original room. And then he came out and he's like, I want to talk to the cool guy. And we just, <laughs> we just happened to have the cameras rolling. Oh, shit. It, yeah. It was so Do cool. you just play it cool in your mind? With Tarantino? Yeah. To a degree, yeah. you know, like, I mean, obviously I'm doing backflips and shit in my brain, but I'm just yeah. having a conversation with him and he's a comedy nerd, man. He, he loves stand up. He was talking about in his twenties, he would come to the comedy store all the time. He would see Sam Kinison in the main oh, room. Wow. He just has a bunch of stand up history knowledge and stuff. Is there, is there like a North star, you, you know, where you want to be or, or where you're going or is there a journey or is it kind of, I love this current place and I just want to maintain. There's certain guys that I, I, you know, I like their career. I like Bill Burr's career Yeah, where a he's a great stand-up comedian. People know him as a stand-up, but then he gets to dabble into some projects. He gets to like F is for family or he gets to act in some things. I think stand-up is the power base and then getting to do like Chris Rock as well, just a great stand-up. And then you get to do offshoots, mm-hmm. but everyone knows you as a stand-up. Yeah. That's alluring to me or like a Hannibal Burris or, uh, like what Louie got to do with his yeah. show and stuff. Like that's kind of the blueprint. I just saw Chris Rock's brother the other night at the comedy store. I just was on Jordan or uh, I don't remember. He or Tony, Tony, very Rock? similar. I don't know, but he was hilarious. I didn't yeah. like. Yeah, I mean, just an absolute. It's a monster. funny family. No, it's yeah, it, it's incredible. Um, yeah. Well, where can everybody find you and all that stuff? Uh, like the the good stuff. Promote good yourself, stuff, man. All right. So the special is called Hat Trick. I put it on my YouTube channel. So if you just go youtube.com slash Fahim Anwar or just type hat trick stand up comedy, it'll, it'll come be in up. the description yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. And then, you know, Fahim Anwar on Instagram, Fahim Anwar comedy on TikTok, Fahim Anwar for uh, Twitter. There we go. It's just Fahim Anwar, guys. Google it. You know, I have a podcast too called Fahim Anwar Dance Hour. And watch everything twice, Aristotle. all right? <laughs> yeah, I need two. We need two. I mean, what else are you doing with your time? Absolutely nothing. But um, hey, man, it was great having you on. Yeah, thanks this for having me, This was like a dude. ton of fun. Oh, yeah, dude. Thanks. Um, yeah, honored to do it. Um, we're probably going to really blow you up. So <laughs> I hope you- <laughs> well, I'm I, ready. I'm ready. I hope you've liked- uh, Yeah, I don't know. I hope you so like far. anonymity because yeah, 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 it's yeah. gone. <laughs> um, Come or, by the comedy store as well, like anytime. No, I, like, I was I was about to ask, even off, off this, let us know your next one because I try to go there a lot and just watch. So yeah, um, yeah anytime. Uh, thank you. If you stay till the end, uh, send me your favorite clip from him. Um, so I know you watched it, you little dragons. And uh, I'll see you later. Alyssa, I love you. Hell yeah. Thanks, dude. There we go. Easy enough.